Hey everybody, today let's talk about effective dates and why the VA is screwing them up under the Appeals Modernization Act at a rate that is downright shocking. So let's talk a little bit about effective dates, but first a disclaimer. I cannot tell you from this video or in the comments whether or not you should file one document or another or how you should go about filing a supplemental claim or a request for increase or any of that stuff. I really can't. I don't know your particular file. I don't know your particular circumstances. Um, and even if you describe your circumstances to me in the comments, there is going to be invariably something in your claims file that is going to potentially change the advice that I would give you, the veteran, if you were my client. I'm going to try to explain some concepts here and some action items that you can take as a veteran to hopefully protect yourself in the process and how to understand the process to get the best possible results in the earliest possible effective date. Now, why are effective dates important? Well, effective dates are the date that basically start your pay. So for instance, if you file something and it takes 12 months for the VA to get right and the VA finally grants you a rating, the VA is actually gonna give you a lump sum payment of 12 months before they start your monthly payments of whatever your disability rate is. So getting the right effective date can be huge, especially if the claim takes a while to sort out. And as we can tell, the VA can sometimes really take a while to sort it out. In fact, I've had clients come to me telling me that they've been pursuing their claims for eight, nine, 10, 12, 15 years before they hire me. And even when they hire me, I can't always get things solved right away. Sometimes we have to go to the Board of Veterans Appeals to get everything sorted out and that can take three to four years just by itself. The VA sits on claims for a long time, we know this. So getting the earliest effective date, getting your claim in early, getting the information that you need to get to them early, this is all very important so that you can get the po earliest possible effective date so when the VA finally makes you whole, to the degree that they can do so, you get the right amount. Let's talk about effective dates generally. If you file a claim and it gets denied, and then you appeal within one year, and by the way, by appeal, I don't mean Board of Veterans Appeals, I mean Supplemental Claim or Higher Level Review, and the VA eventually grants it, assuming you have filed this Supplemental Claim, Higher Level Review, or appealed to the Board of Veterans Appeals within one year of the date of that denial, you should get an effective date that goes all the way back to your initial claim. So here's an example. Let's say January 1st, 2022, I file a claim for my right knee. And on April 15th of 2022, the VA denies it saying that, you know, no injuries while in service or whatever, no, no nexus, whatever the reason is. I immediately turn around and file a supplemental claim with the evidence that shows continuity of treatment or whatever. June 1st of 2022 that year, the VA grants my right knee condition. Well, my right knee condition is gonna go all the way back to January 1st, 2022, and I'm gonna get back pay to January 1st, 2022. What, what's the VA doing that has got me so up in arms and got me so bothered? Well, let's roll back the clock to this case called MVA, or Military Veterans Advocacy versus the Secretary. And this was a really important case because it said supplemental claims are a lot like all other types of claims under the Appeals Modernization Act. And what that means is that when you file an intent to file, that will apply to a supplemental claim just like it applies to a regular initial claim. With me so far? Makes sense. Here's where it gets kind of goofy, and I'm gonna throw out some, some examples here. And if you watch some of my other videos, you know the difference between an increase, requesting an increase versus filing a supplemental claim, challenging the initial rating of a, of a particular disability. I'm gonna throw some examples out. Let's say January 1st, 2022, I apply for my knee condition, Let's say April 15th, they come around and say it's granted and it's at 10% rating. If I say, wait a minute, my right knee is really messed up. I'm going to file a request for increase. I'm going to do it on April 16th, the day after the decision's issued. And it takes the VA another three months to get me into a c and p exam. And finally, in August of 2022, the VA says, you're right, your knee is actually 20% disabling. Well, what's the effective date of that 20%? 
disabling. It goes back to April 16th, 2022, the date that I filed that request for increase. And you're thinking, well, what if I disagreed with the, my need didn't really increase. I don't think it was ever at 10% disabling. I think that's always been 20% for as long as I've been pursuing this claim. Well, the VA says that under, when you file a supplemental claim, they treat it as the date the uh, condition arose. This is where it gets really goofy. January 1st, 2022, I file my initial claim for my right knee. April 15th, they say it's 10% disabling in a rating decision. April 16th, the day afterwards, I file a supplemental claim with evidence, maybe it's a statement saying, my knee really, really hurts worse than it does and I can't move it at all. Let's just throw that out there as an example. And that takes them until July to give me a CMP exam. And let's say the CMP exam is July 15th, 2022. And that CMP exam does the range of motion testing and says, oh yeah, your knee is unstable. You've got some instability, which is a separate rating. And we're gonna give you 20% for knee range of motion and 20% for knee instability. And the VA issues that rating decision in August, let's say mid-August of 2022. Well, what they're gonna do is they're gonna say, well, the date the entitlement arose wasn't April 16th, 2022, or even January 1st, 2022, which is the date of the initial claim. They're gonna say that, that the date that entitlement arose was the date of the CMP exam in July of 2022, something that the veteran has zero control over. I'll say it again, folks. Instead of going with January 1st, 2022, the date of the initial claim, and giving you the continuous pursuit all the way to present and going back and giving you those two 20% ratings all the way back to January 1st. And instead of giving you April 16th, the date you filed your supplemental claim with your additional evidence, well, they're gonna give you the date of the CMP exam, something you had no control over. And that's only if you file a supplemental claim. Here's where I disagree with this and here's where a lot of other attorneys like me and other agents and other folks involved in this really strongly disagree with this. First of all, Factually speaking, the entitlement didn't arise on the day of the CMP exam. That's just when the VA happened to collect evidence of it. Quite frankly, had the original CMP exam back when you did your initial claim found it then and not been awful at their job as quite frankly, many of them are, they would have found it then and you would have had that rating all along. It just so happens that you filed a supplemental claim with additional evidence to show that the condition has always been bad and the VA is now gonna give you this July date the date of a CMP exam where you had no control over it when, the, when it was actually scheduled. The reason we don't like this, the other reason, is that it ignores the MVA case from a couple years ago that said a supplemental claim and an initial claim are very much, should be treated the same way. It also defeats the purpose of continuous pursuit. It doesn't reward a veteran for doing the right thing. So here's what, until we can get this changed, until we can convince the VA to not interpret this rule like this, until we go through the litigation, which could be several more years, here's what you, the veteran, can do. And again, I'm gonna give a shout out to Clay at the CivDiv for, for, for saying this the way he said it. It's all about the evidence. If you have a condition that is giving you pain, if you have a condition that is giving you problems, it, it, range of motion, flare-ups, headaches, what have you. Keep a journal and a log of the issues, of the severity, okay? That way, when you go to your initial CNP exam, you have that log and you can tell them just how bad it is. You can also upload that log on va.gov so it becomes part of your claims file. That way, the VA has the evidence it needs to make a decision. And if it makes a, an incorrect decision, the evidence is in the file and you can file the appropriate challenge, whether it's a higher level review, appeal to the Board of Veterans Appeals, whatever, to show that the, that whatever the issue is has always been this bad. If not, they're gonna give you that stage rating and they're gonna give you the wrong effective date and it's gonna be the date of the CMP exam. And this is only in circumstances where the VA says, well, we don't have any objective evidence that this condition was ever as bad as it really was. The other thing you wanna do when you go to your CMP exams take notes. If you're going to an orthopedic CMP exam where they're measuring range of motion and the doctor doesn't even do range of motion tests or doesn't even use the goniometer, that little thing with the angles, the measures angles, take notes. File, write that down so that you can file that if you need to, challenging the appropriateness or the propriety 
or the or just the overall quality of that exam. That's really, really important. Take notes if something doesn't seem off, doesn't seem right, if they're not doing the range of motion testing the way they should or they're not doing it all. Don't try to argue with the CMP examiner the day of. They're going to ignore you. But take notes of what happens so that you can then provide that to the VA and challenge it accordingly if you need to appeal, if it becomes an issue down the road. And again, there's a lot of information, kind of dense, but, it, but this information on the effective dates comes right from a quality control bulletin that uh, I happen to see, uh, where, again, if the VA is just ignoring effective dates when there's continuous pursuit, and it's incredibly frustrating. Keep in mind, lesson learned, keep a diary, keep a journal, log how bad your conditions are so that you have that evidence to submit to the VA. If you guys have been denied uh, service connection for a claim, or you believe a rating is incorrect, and it's been less than a year since your initial decision, reach out to me and we can see what we can do to help you uh, with regards to filing an appeal. I hope you found this video informative. Like, subscribe, have a good one, take care.